Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Intel Extreme Masters day number three. We're many, 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 many hours in to day number three, but we're not done just yet. We have one more round of series to figure out who is going to be moving on into that round of 12. Important to note that Sola is guaranteed first place in this group, and he moves through into the round of eight, just confirming things to make sure everything's fine. And also, we have Innovation, who is out. He's gone. Yes. Who would have True thought? is gone as well. He's gone. Yes. That's right. Uh, so is true. He's gone too. Um, so, looking at how things are going to play out now, we have situations where three more players can still stay alive. It's going to be Dark going up against Euthermal. It's going to be Solar going up against True. It's going to be Innovation going up against Hurricane. Gentlemen, you do have lobbies, so you will be watching some of those matches, correct? What do you have? I've got Hurricane versus Innovation over here. It's just begun. Blackpink first map. Okay. So uh, obviously, uh, you know, there is still money for the losers of the match, yes. uh, for, for the winners of the, the match, even if they're out. Yes. So there is still a lot on the line for everybody. Uh, definitely an important match for Hurricane to try and get through. And Artos, what do you have? I have True versus Solar. So number the one. most impactful match of the tournament yeah. right here. It's Who's just $200 on the line, Guaranteed first right? place, guaranteed last place. Okay, right. two worlds yeah. will collide in that match, 100%. Uh, okay, it's okay, okay. So what we have now here on the mainstream, of course, is going to be Dark going up against Euthermal, and it means a lot. Mm-mm. Everybody, it's Tasteless and Todd here, and we're going to be bringing you uh, this match that I am super excited to cast. I got to say, you Thermal, uh, I feel like he's the, the the big story coming out of this group. Um, he, he is doing way better than I think a lot of people expected. He was taking out opponents in a very unique and cool way, and I'm really excited to see how he's going to perform now against Dark. I'll be the first to admit I completely counted him out uh, going Same. into this group here. Uh, I thought that Innovation and Dark and somebody else, probably not New Thermal, was going to be able to move on, but. This group has been absolute insanity, and it's not about to change Tasteless. We still, a lot of the matches in it being relevant, including this one. That's right, introducing our first player in the upper right, in the blue, he is Dark! And his opponent here in the bottom left, in the red, he is Euthermal! A man of many build orders. He's gonna need uh, no less than his absolute best ones up against a dark, who sure might finally have lost against a non-Korean player at the last BlizzCon in a laser, but he's still 27 and one. So sick, man. On Legacy of the Void against non-Korean players, By the which way, is insanity. We've been broadcasting all day, and I cannot even imagine how these two guys feel <laughs> at this point in time. Broadcasting can be pretty intense, but grinding in a StarCraft yeah. 2 game against the other best players in the world, that's something else. I mean, Group B started after Group A, technically, right? That's true, but so. I mean, this is a long day for this group. Yeah, for sure. Um, we definitely had some crazy epic games. So let's see what exactly uh, our two players are going to elect to do this time around. You Thermal's had a lot of very specific, uh, cool, deceptive builds. Uh, some yeah. of the proxies, some of them just hiding certain structures to, to throw uh, another player off from the timing. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him do it again here. The way that these groups operate, with everybody playing constantly, uh, all the time. I mean, there's 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 no downtime really for any of the players, or rarely is. So they wouldn't have a lot of time to try to research each other's strategies, uh, on, it, at least the ones that are being used already. So yeah. I, I don't even think it would be bad if you circle, uh, <laughs> you circle, you thermal uh, recycled some of these builds he's already done. 
Yeah, yeah we'll see. Uh, I think having specific builds and special ones can be something very good a lot of the time, but it's going to be really hit or miss if he does that style, which I guess is kind of the name of the game if you're going to be playing uh, specific builds that have big commitment usually towards aggression. You tumble on this map, when he, I think when he played against True, he played Mech. And he, he actually lost that game. That didn't go well at all. I think that was against True at least, but... Uh, I think you're right about if, that. Yeah, if he does that against Dark, I don't think he would have a very good chance to win. So we'll see if he plays the same or if he changes it up. Loses the Reaper here after killing a drone. A drone, so not going to be able to check when that third hashery starts. Newton was actually mining quite a bit of gas. I think he's on double gas. And uh, the the factory is about to finish. So expect the star port to start. And then from there, we'll see exactly what he wants to go into. So, right now, the map, a dark and scary place here for you, Thermal. You really don't, even though we got the drone, which is cool, you you, you don't want to lose that that early because um, uh, along with keeping the Zerg just honest, you're able to monitor the movement um, and, and see if anything's going to leave his base. So this is going to be an uncomfortable start here for uh, for you, Thermal. And Dark using that momentum here of having killed that one Reaper to go across the map with Fallings, trying to apply some pressure, flies in there to see the exact scout on what's going on in the main base, but at Overlord, will get chased away now as the first two Hellions enter the field. There's two more on the way. And I wouldn't be surprised if the starport here was to start... Uh, I was going to say, yeah, is, either yeah. a Banshee, Banshee or a Raven because he has so much gas. Do so we see Cloak starting? I think we will in a second. Let's see, he's about 150 gas right now. Um, and then we'll know. Roach Warren also coming down here for Dark. And, uh, you know, originally this there would be the Reaper with these Hellions coming out now. Um, but this time, because it was eliminated, it's just the Hellions all alone. And now we've got Stim starting. So we're kind of getting the, the pacing here of this game. And, you know, un unless Dark chooses to do some kind of all-in, most of what the Zerg's doing at this phase of the game is trying to get a read on the, the Terran player and, and set uh, their own pace so that they can continue to expand, macro up, tech up, and hold off any kind of attack that would come from the Terran. Yeah, Hellion number five and six here uh, just completed, so... Euthermal could be applying some very strong pressure here in just a second. Two more barracks going to be added on. He obviously uh, still wants to play a bio-heavy style. And we'll see just after that exactly what Euthermal goes into. I loved that build that he did against True in that third map. Yeah. If he was to do something like that, I think that could be very good. But also, like I said, it's truly hit or miss when you go for something like this. If somebody like, like Dark realizes what's happening and makes enough units, you're never going to do uh, really any damage. So the Hellions, um, this is some modest play, I'd say, here by Euthermal. He just doesn't want to overextend or lose anything. Four more barracks stays this. That's right. And uh, he's powering up here. So we should have an attack coming up here in a little bit. Uh, no Terran trying to squeeze out a third here. Instead, he is hoping to get into Dark's face. Now, I'm a little bit worried for him because I, I will say Dark tends to survive almost any push people throw at him. You yeah. don't normally see Dark just get tipped over. Uh, easy peasy like that. So let's see. Uh, oh, he's actually ready for this. He actually sends the Hellions forward here to try and maybe get some drones, but Dark, with some great crease spread and great positioning on his units, kills all of these Hellions and now has perfect map control. That Benchy is going to get chased with actually only five health points. Oh, and great scout by Dark. He sees everything there was to see. He sees the amount of barracks. This, so is a, this is very good for Dark right now because he realizes that there's going to be a big push coming. All he has to do is stop droning and make a ton of units. And that's exactly what he's about to be. Oh, no, he's actually still droning up. He actually made two or three more drones. I was about to, I kind of preempted what I thought he was going to do. Now we see some roaches being made. But yeah, I mean, if you know the exact time they're going to attack, um, that's when you just want to try to get the rest of your army. If you know, if you make yeah. that army too soon, then you didn't make enough drones and tearing ends up ahead later on. So uh, this push is going to happen no matter what. It should be mapped out to where the attack upgrade finishes right as the rest of Euthermal's army actually gets up uh, to where that push is. Now, uh, we already see some Ravagers being made. You definitely need to have a few of those to try to gun down the tank. Uh, some of these Terrans are so good at putting tanks into uh, smart positions that the Roaches, it's just too hard to get up close to them. Uh, like that. And so we see Dark wants to try to pick this fight over here at the ramp, forcing New Thermal to siege prematurely. Dark is delaying the siege that he knows is coming. He's morphing in more Ravagers. He wants to land those corrosive bites on top of those tanks. It's really going to be for New Thermal to try and make that very difficult and punish 
Dark's army. Dark trying to catch some reinforcements with some roaches. This is beautifully done here. And your thermal actually goes forward here at the front with a lot of units. Oh. I'm not sure if Dark sent too many units across the map too early. It seemed almost like uh, Dark wasn't quite ready for your thermal to get into his face like that. We saw two queens as well as a Ravager gunned down. Now, these small number of roaches, they can uh, easily get in the way of any reinforcing Marines. You know, Terran armies, they're only good when they're all bunched up together. If you can isolate any Terran units and kill them, you're going to be in pretty good uh, in pretty good shape. So these roaches still continuing to cause a problem. And now Dark pouncing on the army here of Youth Thermal. And this is going to be cleaned up easily. Yeah, and Dark from there will take a huge supply lead across the map. He's still doing some damage onto those SCVs. Finally going to get cleaned up. With, his, with such an, an easy defense on his side of the map, the creep is still spreading. He's taking a fourth base against a U-Thermal that's still stuck on two bases. Looks like Dark has set an expiration date on this game. We need to see U-Thermal get a, a third base soon. And of course, this is sort of the risk and reward that we saw from uh, U-Thermal's build. He wanted to do damage right away. And because of that, he didn't get that third CC. So in the long run, he's going to have less money. And it seems like U-Thermal, instead of trying to get that third CC later on, and by the way, I actually agree with him doing this, he's going to double down and just try to push yeah. even harder. Usually, if that doesn't work, he's going to run out and exhaust himself. Usually U-Thermal is that guy that's very good at flying his main orbital to, to a new base. So he right. would definitely do that. But I mean, he's falling so far behind in supply right now. Like, as you said, there is an expiration date on this game. And I feel like it's going to be in the next few minutes if you Thermal's push cannot do any damage. Dark in such a great position. The creep spread, one of his biggest tools here to just engage super fast or even buy time if he needs to, and he's just going to have an incredible army here in a minute. And, you know, I, I think it was really uh, quite cool to see that small group of roaches used to buy so much time because that took the wind out of the sails uh, of that push there from you, Thermal. We're getting dark, getting close to 150 supply. Uh, and he's going to just add in a few additional banelings here and max out and basically wait. Wait for the attack or wait for that uh, CC to eventually be lifted and land over at that third base. Dark doesn't have to do anything other than that because U Thermal has set this game up to go in that direction. Wow, Dark is, has played this so beautifully so far here. He has units yeah. ready in the main base for that drop. Dark takes this game very seriously. He doesn't always show the most emotions in public, but he's actually one of those guys that trains super hard that this game means the world to him. When he lost at BlizzCon to Elazer, that's when he went for, for the first loss against a non-Korean player in Legacy of the Void for the first time ever. I heard that he cried and he has to be sent home. He was, well, that's he was literally I mean, the only player I, that, that went hey man, home right after I, he lost. I respect that. I, I, I really do. Um, because, you know, he trained so hard. He's hungry. He wants to yeah. be that champion. By the way, this game, he's making it look easy. Um, but let's see about this next push coming here from you, Thermal. He's got the four Liberators. He's got plenty of tanks. One medevac actually full. I think he's going to have to unload that before this attack happens. But here we go. Dark coming up now. The Baneling spilling down towards the Marines. Corrosive Vile shot out. And there is just not quite enough for Dark to push all the way through. But he can always re macro up and try to regroup. And you can see now with that last Liberator being gunned down. Oh, excuse me. One more Corrosive Vile away from actually taking that out. I don't know if you Thermal is going to make a dent in the armor here of Dark. Dark actually about to get a fifth base, Todd. <laughs> Against a wow. two base, yeah. Karen, like sure. The main orbital of Uthermal is flying to a new base, but Dark just has so much all the time. He doesn't look like Uthermal is going to be able to catch up in supply anytime soon. He needs to somehow take a fantastic fight to try and come back in this. I like the attempt here, the big drop in the main base of Dark to try and catch him off guard, but Dark always going to have so much speed on creep to try and come back there and defend against this. And I think he might even have left some, some units uh, ready to defend there. Okay. We've got Ultra Cavern coming down now. I, I feel like this is getting to the point of diminishing returns as Dark has nearly doubled oh, the supply. Pool. But this is pretty sick, actually. Uh, coming down here, using the spawning pool for cover, uh, he's going to get a pretty damn good trade, actually. Liberators coming in as well. You Thermal not giving up quite yet. The problem is that once Dark's army gets there, we know that you Thermal's not going to win the fight. And the growth rate of Dark is actually, this is not ever what a normal TBZ looks like. Yeah. If the game's going to be even. And I mean, this if you look at the amount of Zerglings that Dark has, when he gets Adrenal Gland and that extra upgrade with the plus two melee, you Thermal's going to be in even bigger trouble. I feel like, I keep saying this, but you Thermal, he has to make this game work in his favor here for once now with his big push. Because yeah. if that gets pushed back, that might be it here. 
dark and yeah. then counter attack his production is just completely out of control he's gonna try to swarm him at the edge of the creep here all right here we go more banelings uh coming down now and there is just no way yep that's it gg dark crushing you thermal in game number one it took some time for dark to fully kick it to gear here at, at the intel extreme masters but he's finally got there a crushing victory in his previous match and now looking really good against you thermal in that game number one Ethermal doesn't seem to be too bothered by that uh, that loss back there, but I, I think it's pretty clear that that style coming from Ethermal is not going to work against somebody like Dark. Dark, for uh, a period in time in StarCraft II, basically had the best late game that there was. He was showing um, everybody how to do things with Zerg we didn't really know were possible. And the reason why that's important here is that that means he doesn't die to pushes. Yeah, he's not usually eliminated right away because that's that's where he has his wealth of experience in the late game is he just keeps st stopping everything you're trying to do. And eventually you take a look at the supplies, how many bases they have. Oh, you say, yeah. oh my God, dark is dark is too big to fail. And um, I don't blame you thermal for trying to push like that, but I just I don't know if he can try it again here in game number two. I think if you thermal wanted to do that kind of push, he should have kept his Hellions alive and the Banshee as well and try to push the creep back around the third base because that's where you really want to attack and siege having so much creep out like once you lose the hellions you're in so much trouble zerg basically can creep spread completely out of control for as long as they want to and the creep changes everything in those fight states list the, the map changes from black pink to purple blue as often as he said that's right covered in that zerg jam man <laughs> <laughs> that creep um we're now gonna go into game number two Dark versus you, Thermal. Dark with a 1-0 lead. Introducing our first player in the upper left, in the blue, he is Dark! His opponent in the bottom right, in the red, he is you, Thermal! There was a glimmer of hope, but I would say for you, Thermal, in the next match, but uh, I don't know if it was a frustrating loss or if he just wants to go back to his old tricks, but it's going to be a proxy barracks with three of them going down here from you, Thermal. No gas, just pure Marines. This He's going to put it all on the line, taste I, this. I, I, I like it, actually. I think this is a really smart approach. Stop the game before it starts. Get in there. <laughs> Get in there. Just do. Uh, do, do play. Look, this is going to force Dark to, to play by your rules, but rough, Is bro. it, though? Uh, yeah, look at this. Dark, just, it looks like he may be able to spot this. Let me just check and see if there's anything down over in <laughs> this area <laughs> and there is <laughs> and the thing is Utomal doesn't know about this Utomal doesn't have the vision so obviously I mean not like he would change anything he's not gonna change the course anyway yeah well I mean stay, yeah, yeah. it's not like you can start a CC fly, back those, home fly the barracks back home no yeah, he's just going to get Marines, go for the attack. Look at his stock, immediately cutting drone production. Drones yep. don't defend against this. You need Absolutely Zerling not. Queens. No you drones need allowed. Powers. And now we got to see um, if if the element of surprise is, is, is a factor or not here. This is still a very aggressive rush. I mean, there's uh, almost nothing in the main at all, I believe. I think there's one depot or something like that. By the way, keep in mind a counterattack uh, is a problem and um, I'm not sure what the, this pause is about but um, I'm sure we'll be jumping back into this shortly it seems like he had to make some tiny adjustment kind of a nail what biter a here dramatic effect tastes. that's right we're gonna have to wait a few seconds longer to know who, that, who wins that game so I think we have the ref come in there just very briefly good confirmation for when the two players can start the game back up uh, First of all, you have to try to hold the rush. Oh my god, we're back in this game. Okay. Um, so the Marines are coming here. They're doing damage. The drones are pulled. Queen pops out. Spine crawler at 50%. Yeah, you told me he's one of the best Terrans in that position to catch with his Marines, but there's so many inks already out. He's going to deal with them very nicely. Almost running out of SCVs, but the spine crawler is about to die. There's two Queens helping with this as well. 
It looks like Dark will be holding on for now. And he's got speed on the way. He's got 10 more links on the way. Uthermal, he has to win it right now. It looks like he's debating, trying to shimmy over behind the minerals. The problem is then he can end up getting boxed in. And that's kind of the point of no yeah. return. All, I think he's, he's going to wait for a couple more Marines and go for Broke on the spine crawler, try to kill it. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think all Dark has to do is be patient. He's trying to bait Dark to engage into him here. Yeah, by yeah. attacking the hatchery. He's trying he's to like, fish him out. Exactly. Bait him. Yeah. It doesn't look like Dark's going to bite the bait, though. Uh, now, putting some pressure on this hatchery. This is a lot of Marines. This can die pretty quickly. He comes forward. Again, every hit these Marines take, they're not going to regen. Speed is completed now. Dark's still being very patient, and he should be. I mean, he eats that one inject. He's going to be getting so many links. We see the point of view of Uthermal here. All he's got is Marines. He's going to be pulling back. Nice baiting here, but I mean, Dark is getting so many units, and he already has speed with the three queens as well. Yep, oh, does damage that one queen. The links, though, they spill in, and a really good surround. The queen's still taking pot shots in the back. The Marines run off the creep, but the numbers are getting thinned out. Yeah, reality is going to start to settle in here in yeah. a second for you, Thermal. He has lost so many Marines, and Dark's production is just so far superior. He's got more workers. And there, there is no transition possible here either. Like, he will get counterattacked by Zerglings. I'm surprised this hasn't, this hasn't even happened for just a few of them. So Yutomo will try a little bit longer, but right now, Dark would have to mess up. Would have to make one of the biggest mistakes of his career here for him to lose. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, here it is. There's the counterattack I was talking about. So the dilemma Terran puts himself in when he does a strategy like this is that all the uh, production buildings, all the barracks are, are outside of your base. So how do you really defend your main? You don't. You, you, there, the answer is you don't. I mean, He's there's gonna not have much to go you can for do. It. He's he going to have to attack the CC and then just try to go all the way across the map. But I, I think that the... Oh, he's oh, faking that all the SCVs are there. He's actually going to oh, attack with them. This is actually pretty smart, but I think Dark already just sends one Lingen to make sure. The Marines are going around, and actually, this is pretty good surface area. Okay, that looks a lot better to me <laughs> than that orange color. It's like, what, a fly that seat? low resolution game? Only the colors that a fly sees the world in was what he thermal was playing <laughs> on. Um, so, the Marines are going to come forward. If he gets the spine, uh, I oh, don't know. He's going to have to like step back against the wall. And it's just so much damage. I mean, Uthermal microwaving his heart out, but it's just not going to be enough. GG! Dark wins in a convincing 2-0 against Uthermal. And just like that, Dark is now 3-2. and two. From 1-2 and two to winning his last two series. Well, this is a day of survival here for Dark. A smile on Uthermal's face as they shake hands. It was a tough one. Uh, like, did you really your... think this was going to work? Yeah, yeah. Well, what are you going to do? After game number one going the way it did, I don't blame you, Thermal, for trying something kind of strange, kind of crazy. Um, all right, guys. Uh, we're going to throw it to an interview now with Dark and see how he's feeling um, after winning that. But we're going to do that first after this short break. So we'll be back in just a little bit here at the Intel Extreme Masters.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice. We just saw our last match here in Group B, and it was Dark that came out on top. So first of all, congratulations, Dark. It was a really hard road for you. You went from being 1-2 on the verge of elimination, and you finally qualified by making it 3-2. So first of all, what are your initial thoughts? 일단, 어, 되게 힘들게 1대2에서 3대2로 드디어 진출을 하셨는데 어, 힘든 만큼 기분이 좀더 이상할 것 같은데 지금 기분이 어떠세요? 어 정말로 좀 지옥에서 돌아온 것 같고요. <웃음> 어 그래도 어떻게 좀 승수 관리를 잘해가지고 좀 어, 신영이 형 이기고 나서부터는 좀 올라갈 거라는 확신이 있었어요. He says it literally feels like I went to hell and back. Uh, but honestly, I just I, I think that the, the deciding factor was after I um, I faced innovation. I decided to just focus really hard and uh, just do my best in the matches that came after that. And I think that that's why I was able to win. And now in this group, there was a lot of ups and downs. But you said it yourself that you weren't feeling your best today. Uh, do you think that that's something that'll Uh, get better moving forward into the round of 12. 아까 전에 얘기했을 때는 아, 오늘 그냥 컨디션이 안 좋았다고 했는데 네. 어, 이제 12강부터는 더 좋은 모습 볼수 있을까요? 어 당연한 질문을 해주셨고요. 이제 좀 올라가는 일만 남은 것 같아요. 제가 좀 조별 리그에서 많이 약해가지고 안 그래도 24강이 좀 가장 큰 고비일 것 같다고 생각했는데 그 고비를 넘었으니까 이제 어, 날개를 날개짓 할 일만 남은 것 같아요. So he says, I think that that's a very obvious question. I think that for me personally, the hardest part of a tournament is always the group stage. And now the only thing that's left for me is to just advance and keep going forward. So now that I'm in the bracket stage of the round of 12, I think the only thing that's left for me is to Uh, put on these wings and just keep going forward. And, and when it comes to the previous years in Katowice, you actually have two years of making it to the semifinal in a row. So I'm curious, this uh, this year, do you think you'll finally be able to break that and move forward? 이제 월드 팀에서 2년 연속으로 4강에서 떨어졌잖아요. 그래서 이 올해에는 넘을 수 있을까요? 어 월드 팀만 오면 4강에서 계속 떨어지더라고요. 그래서 이번에는 진짜 좀 트로피를 갖고 가고 싶어서. 정말 이 갈고 준비 많이 해왔으니까요. 앞으로 그냥 기대 많이 해주시고 지켜봐 주셨으면 좋겠습니다. So he says, strangely enough, for, for some reason, every time I came to Katowice, I kept falling down in the semifinal. But this year, I really want to grab that trophy. So prior to this event, I really practiced very, very hard. And I'm going to ensure to show my absolute best performance. So make sure to expect a lot from me. So congratulations again on qualifying. You'll, we'll find out who the remaining player to join him and Solar will be in just a little bit. Back to you, James. That's right. Thank you, Smix. Welcome back to the battle station here at the Intel Extreme Masters with Captain Kyle Aris. And we do have a match that is currently going on. Firstly, congratulations to Dark for advancing on into the round of 12. Got a little bit ahead of myself there. But we do have Hurricane versus Innovation, which is an important match, gentlemen, because basically we figured it out, kind of, maybe. Yes. If you thermal, well, no, if Hurricane wins, he's through. Yes. If Innovation wins, you, you thermal's through. through. That's right. Yeah. There you go. So this is game three. We so let's jump go. into it. It's on right on now. Pink's laptop. All right, all right, Pink's all right. Let's all go right, into right. my laptop. Let's laptop number one. I guess it's called. Cool. We're there already. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. So I have to do my. So far this game, I mean, there's just been some light harassment on both sides. Yes. Uh, both of them have locked it well. I feel like Innovation is playing quite well. Like he was pulling away SCVs at like one health, and uh, I feel like Hurricane's just slightly fatigued. There's like a funny moment where. Uh, an Oracle flew over a Hellion that was on patrol, mm -hmm. turned on, started to attack the Hellion. The Hellion was still on patrol, came back under the Oracle. He misclicked the Oracle. It missed attacking because obviously he was right clicking. Yeah. And then it Are looked you? at the Hellion for a moment and flew away. Yeah, I, it, it turned its laser off. It was just like, nah, you can leave. It's like, me. yeah. It's <laughs> like, listen, I can't do tired? this. Are you saying that's tired? It's possible. It's possible? Okay. Good to know. Uh, we have Stasis Wards down uh, as well in the middle of the map. So yeah, even yeah. if he moves out, it could potentially booby trap him like some kind of Scooby Doo villain's house. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got Ooh, him. gets the. Oh, four Widow Mines. No and Scooby yeah. snacks for the him. Cyclone. Oh, indeed. That's big because this is a massive commitment to a two base push here from Innovation. Of course, the winner of this. I and mean, this decides a lot, right? Hurricane's fighting for his life. If yep. he does. Innovation's fighting for Terran. Yeah, he's fighting for Euthermal. If Thanks he wins, Euthermal goes through. So right now, all the hope is on Innovation to make a big two base push work. And I think this is the right call to be patient. He waited for the stasis to wear off. Ooh. Oh, that Cyclone, oh. a little he bit too He stemmed the close. Marine to try to bait that, too. Yeah. And look at that, he scans right on top. Okay, the Observer does go down. 
That is nice. This widow mine count, man. Dude, there's high energy on those sentries, man. Yeah, the Zealot's not going to be that useful. I love... Oh, they don't have charge. I love the yeah, Disruptor that's coming out here now, uh, following up this Colossus. Colossus is on the way out. You know, going to try and push in between oh, the area. Oh He's going to in position. He's going to try oh and stem up for this it. This is crazy. Force fields are so good didn't right there. Oh, oh, look at that. Winner mines. Man, he didn't get that Colossus. Very close. Winner, those, winner, Zealot dinner, man. Those force fields were off, man. You just need to put that on the ramp. <laughs> It's going to yeah. go Doom Drop that main base, of course. Uh, Widow Mines top of the ramp mine. is going to be beautiful. Uh, I don't think there's... Oh, nice Zealot spread. Ooh. Those Widow Mines don't get good shots at no, all. No, he's got to get out of here. Oh, oh no! Oh, full medevac goes down. Oh, and the Phoenix come for the cleanup, uh, but it's not really going to do too much. You separate them off. And on the right-hand side here, another fight going to be hitting on towards that third base with those recall coming in. Look Ooh, at how many Widow Mines are right there, that's though. That's going to be pretty good Holy Widow Mine shots. Holy crap, those Widow Mines. Watch yeah. this, watch this. Ooh. Boom, baby. Some nice fireworks there. Will it be enough, though? I don't think so. Innovation, remember, he needs to do in the natural massive damage, and this is not it just yet. And not really doing much in the natural here at all. Hurricane seems to be cleaning up very nicely. Here yeah. comes Innovation with another drop, heading towards the main base, trying to do some damage there. This is meant to clearly be a series of attacks that keep on escalating. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to stop using that follow command. Having fun with that. <laughs> yeah, bad muscle <laughs> well, memory. Uh, uh, but, uh, don't forget, he doesn't have a recall right now. Right. Is Recalls true. on cooldown. He does Where's not have recalls. There's filming. nothing up there. Mm -hmm. He's realizing it's, it's a weak oh, point, yeah, though. Yeah. He is going to start They're to move coming. some stalkers up. Only going to be a few seconds in this mineral line before these units do go down. The army on the third, I don't think, really oh. has an angle. So his best chance here is to just trade out well with these stalkers and zealots. Yeah. Does innovation have any cost of action at all for a third base, or is he just hitting and rallying? No, this is this is maybe a command center lift for third base. Like, yeah. Oh. But he's like up yeah. and upgrade all this time, which is kind of nice. He's still got like an okay army supply. He's got some mobility for him. Gonna try and drop on towards the third base? No, just sit here for a little bit and keep it as a threat for later on. Templar Archives is about to finish up as well here for Protoss though. So Protoss army getting well, really well rounded out. There's another big attempt at dropping scans just to make sure that there's no observer mm -hmm. keeping an eye on it. So what do we have in this main base? No defense, he's going for more forges. A lot of units in that natural are going to start reacting soon. There we go, once hey. again. Concave on top Ooh, of the ramp. This is good damage. That's pretty good, and that's a nice spread of Widow Mines, too. Except for... Oh, stock up! Nice. His, Very well done. These Widow Mines have really not been getting the hits he'd like. No, they really... Ha and they're, like, been placed really well. Oh, my oh. God. Ooh. <laughs> oh, it's brutal. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Hurricane. He came well. in like a hurricane. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Um, innovation's in huge trouble, dude. He, he doesn't have a third CC. Yep. He doesn't have an armory. He's starting to add some liberators, but I mean, he's really got to lift this base soon as well, I think. Yeah, this this is just fizzling out, right? We've got Storm mm. on the way. 2-1 now. There's so much going for Hurricane. So he's got to run around in circles, basically, and yeah. keep Hurricane on his side of the map. This yeah. is scary, man. This it, It's really rough right now for innovation, and thus you thermal. But he's still, like, <laughs> there's still a chance here, right? Like. Yep. Innovation's making a big army. He needs to stop bleeding off units, so he's bled off a hell of a lot of units yeah. in the last couple minutes. He was trying to like get he, that momentum, but he kind of yeah. started slowing down, and he got diminishing returns there. Ooh, Speaking of which, attack. an interesting attack, but I think the libs are going to get mostly focused down by these stalkers. Yeah. Shield battery doing some good work in the back there as well. And the big problem is, is that the Colossus number is never getting thinned, so yeah. he can keep replenishing the gateway units very easily, and the Colossi numbers are just going to keep racking up. I mean, admittedly, he has to. Ah, ah that is it. Right. GG. Hurricane advances on by yeah. the looks of things, yeah. unless our admins say otherwise. <laughs> Just they won't. covering myself there as they best won't. I can. Uh, but look, I mean, Euthermal actually really played out of his mind today. Like, really yeah. fantastic play, great games. Uh, but yeah, it looks like that, that just gives Hurricane the extra point, right? He goes yep. up to 3-2 yes. with a 7-6 map score. As opposed to, of course, Euthermal 6-7. Right, uh, and it goes map score before head-to-head. -head. Exactly. That is correct. So this is something where, you know, it has happened before here. Last year as well, I remember the same thing, yep. where the player who may have defeated the other player, but overall didn't perform as well in terms of maps. So just yep. because you beat the other guy in the head-to-head -head doesn't count for everything. And uh, unfortunately, Euthermal will be dropping out. But Hurricane turning up today, yeah, yeah. surprising a lot of us. We were all like, hey, Innovations is shoe in Hurricane somewhere down the bottom there. He maybe can fight for third place. 
But uh, he ended up playing very well in some of these matches. I think for Hurricane, one of the biggest wins that came to his aid when actually advancing on was against Dark. As much as Dark has advanced in second place, guaranteed, uh, that is our Group A. Uh, as you can see, yeah. TY, Dia, and Maru have advanced on in the top three. And then Solar, we have Dark, we have Hurricane. But for Hurricane, that match against Dark was pivotal in being able to be able to uh, just advance on in third, even though Dark has come second in that group. That was an absolute destruction yeah. in, in some of the early game moves yeah. he made happen. And honestly, he's just been looking very good. His PvZ versus True was one of the most one-sided affairs we've seen <laughs> in a while. Like the, yeah. the four Archons oh that were the most cost-efficient Archons of all time. I think it was about a four to one resource loss ratio Absolutely. in that game. Yeah. It was wow. just insane. So uh, his PvZ is on point. His PvT, uh, you know, very close series with Uthermal did end up taking down Innovation. Uh, didn't get tested uh, too much in the PvP today, but uh, we might get to see some more of that in the following days as well. Yeah, we may, we may. It's good to see, though, today throughout the day, you know, of Group A and Group B, what's the thing that really stands out to you? For me, it's TY getting to the round of eight, having the potential to have a little leg up on some of the other competition mm. to defend his championship here. This trophy right here, this one. Yeah, it, that's definitely a big deal. I think uh, the return of Solar is a big deal as well like i mean yes. he's always been very good but he hasn't had a good time lately and yep. that's as dominating a victory as ty had uh maybe more so because we didn't expect it but they both Impressive. ended up with a 10-2 map score which is super duper dominating at 5-0 yep. um and then of course you thermal like I very mean, strong he's he beat innovation straight up man really well played and yep. had a lot of great series in fact, even beating Hurricane, I mean, it's serious stuff. He can walk away with his head held high, even yeah. though he did not make the bracket stage. Pig, your last thoughts before we close things out? Deer showed up as well. Let's not forget him. Just a little yep. word there that Deer is back as well. He's in fine form. Uh, this is such a great tournament because these players don't just go out after one or two series. We see some of them have a bad start, claw their way back yeah. through. It's been awesome. We've yep. got Group C and D tomorrow, so I'm just super hyped for another 12-hour broadcast of beautiful, beautiful games there of StarCraft. There you go. <laughs> thank you very much, Pig. Thank you very much, Artosis, as well. And thank you very much, everybody out there, for tuning in for day number three of the Intel Extreme Masters. Make sure to tune in same place, same time tomorrow, as we'll have two more round-robin groups of six of these players each to find out who is going to be moving on to not only the round of eight, but also the round of 12. And we'll see you then.